during this video I'm going to give a brief overview about Rust topics. Rust topics represent one of the most important features of robot operating system. They allow asynchronous communication between publishers and subscribers and allow to exchange messages between different nodes in the ROS ecosystems. So let's see how it works. So basically in ROS it's a collection of several nodes. Some nodes will produce information and these nodes we call them publishers and some other nodes will consume this information or the data and these nodes we typically call them subscribers. So let's us consider a very simple example. Here you have a node that works as a publisher of odometry and here you have another node that is called subscriber for a slam application. So what happens here is that a slam application is responsible for building a map. So in order to build a map, it will require to have the coordinates x, y and theta of the robot. And these coordinates will be provided by a special node that is called odometry, which acts as a publisher of this information. So the odometry is going to perform locally computations in order to estimate the location of the robot, which is x, y and theta, and then we'll publish this information through a particular topic so that the subscriber can listen to it whenever there is any change of the value x and y and theta. So the communication channel between the publisher and subscriber is called topic. It is also possible to have one publisher and multiple subscribers for the same publisher. As an illustrative example, we can have a distance sensor from a laser scanner that will publish the distance to obstacle to one node, for example, a node that is responsible of obstacle avoidance, and also can publish the same range information to another node, for example, a node working on the SLAM operation, because SLAM would need the distance information to estimate the distance to the walls and then build the map based on this information. So it's possible to have one-to-one -one communication or one-to-end communication or even multiple publisher and multiple subscribers depending on the purpose. So to summarize, usually in ROS we have some nodes that act as publishers and some others that act as subscribers and they communicate between each other using a particular topic. So messages that will be exchanged between a publisher and subscriber will be exchanged over a certain topic and they will use a certain message format. So the message that will be exchanged between the publisher and subscriber will contain the information that will be exchanged. And for this, every message would have a particular type. In the lecture where we have presented topics, nodes, and messages, we have already explained these concepts. So let me show you now how a publisher and subscriber can communicate between each other. So basically, the first thing that we need to start in a ROS system is to start the master node. The master node will be responsible of identifying all the different nodes, all the different topics. So for example, this node, when it wakes up, it will contact the master to register itself and register all the topics that it may publish or it may subscribe to. The same thing for node two. And now let's imagine that we have a new ROS network that has started. So we first start the ROS master and the ROS master is going to maintain all the information about the ROS network, including the node list, the topic names, everything. And then later in time, imagine that we have a second node that is called node two and it will act as a subscriber for a particular topic. So node two is going to declare itself to the master node saying, hey, I'm a new node. I would like to join the network. This is my name, subscriber node name, and I would like to subscribe to a topic with a particular name, topic name, and to exchange messages of a certain type. So everything will be declared to the ROS master node, which will keep this information, waiting to have a publisher that will satisfy this criteria. Later on, a publisher node can wake up, and also it will do the same thing. It's going to declare itself to the ROS master node, presenting all the information about itself, the publisher node name, the topic name, and the message type that is going to be exchanged on this topic. So the master now will have a global knowledge about these two different nodes and will figure out that the topic name required by node 2 is published by node 1. So it will tell node 2 that there is now a new node that acts as a publisher for the topic that you are looking for. So in this case, node 2, when it receives this information, is going to send a request 
for a connection with node 1 using the TCP ROS protocol and then node 2 will send back a response to accept the connection and start the communication with node 2. So at this time the subscriber node will create a client for the publisher node using TCP ROS and connects to the publisher node. So the connection will be established at this point in time and the communication between the nodes using TCP IP based protocol can start between the two nodes. So once the connection is fully established then node 1 can start sending the messages on the common topic of interest and node 1 will be sending messages at a regular time intervals depending on the frequency to send messages to node 2. On the other hand node 2 is going to have a callback function that whenever there is a new message that is received by node 2 is going to execute this callback function and will perform the required processing of the message according to the application logic. So let's look at this example here where we have a node that acts as a publisher and is going to receive velocity commands from a keyboard and on the other hand we have a turtle sim, sim simulator which is going to receive the commands from the keyboard and then execute the commands to make the robot move in the simulation board. So the first operation is that the turtle sim node will send a request to declare itself into the master node. So it will tell him about the node. This is the name of the node turtle sim. This is the name of the topic he will be waiting commands on. It's called turtle one cmd val. And the type of messages for this topic is the twist message. And the twist message in ROS is used to send the linear speed and the angular speed of the robot. So the second step is that the publisher node is going also to declare itself. It will tell the ROS master about its uh, node name, teleop turtle, about the topic is going to publish and about the type of the message for this topic. So when this information reaches the ROS master, it will figure out that both nodes will use the same topic. Okay, so there is a matching here on the topic and also the message type. So in this case, it will inform as the third step, the simulator that now there is a new node is called TurtleBot Teleop. So contact this node in order to have the information that you need from it. So in this case, the turtle sim node is going to send a request to the turtle teleop key node, and then the teleop node will send back a response and the connection will be established. And then every key, whenever there is a key that is pressed by this node, this key will send a velocity command to this uh, simulator, which is going to execute it and make the robot moves.